Once again, good evening to everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you for taking the opportunity to join us. Tonight is really, really good. Because, you know, I always think of God in terms of knowing Him. And, and there's no real purpose than to be in a relationship with Him and not to know him. But the difficult part is knowing his ways, making sure that you're not deceived. And so tonight, we're going to go through some scriptures. But tonight, the Lord just really purposely wants you to get, gain a great understanding about the kingdom and how he operates in relationship. So I just want you to pay attention tonight. Because there are going to be so many good things that come out of tonight, if you're listening, that really give you an understanding of what to expect from God if you are faithful. And that's what we're really after, is what's our expectation in knowing God? So get your Bibles and go to Zechariah chapter 4, and we're going to uh, read what verses 6 through 10. 10. So Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. I want you to listen. And I often say this to people all the time, so I'm going to say it again. Listen, it's impossible to serve the Lord and your thinking not change. The place, the way that God signifies or causes people to discern those that are his is they think differently as it relates to the things of the kingdom of heaven. Your thinking changes your speech. So if your thinking has not changed, then your speech has not changed. And we sound nothing like the world as it relates to how we think about increase on earth. But you'll get all of that tonight as you listen. But understand, your speech changes as God changes your thinking because this is how he sets you apart. Not only through increasing you, but how he changes your thinking in your speech as you speak about him. You should sound different because he's creating a different language in those who trust in him. So get your Bibles and go to Zechariah chapter 4 and we're going to read verses 6 through 10. First, let's pray, then we'll get into the word. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you for all that you are doing in this moment. We thank you for your word. God, these are your people. You know, their hearts, their desires, their concerns. You know, every fear that they have, God. You know, all of the things that they hope for. So, God, do what only you can do. Speak to their hearts according to your knowledge of their heart. Let it rain in this place right now. We bless you. We praise you. Right now, in the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. Listen to what it says. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Take your pen, circle the word Zerubbabel. Saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace, unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Amen. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight. The everlasting kingdom. The everlasting kingdom. And let's start in verse number six. And I want you to make sure you listen carefully. I had you circle Zerubbabel. I want you to circle one more word for me. I want you to circle the Lord in verse six. Circle the Lord and circle Zerubbabel. And I just want you to listen. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Now understand, the Lord 
in in the scripture signifies that it's time to receive from the Lord. And the heart of the Lord towards his servant is clearly made manifest in the scripture. And understand, the heart of the Lord towards his servant is to give him clarity and understanding concerning how he will prosper the works that he has put in his hand to perform in his name. So now understand, the Lord's heart towards him is to give him clarity and to give him understanding of how he will prosper the works that he has put in his hand to perform in his name. So now listen, the Lord's heart is to give him clarity. And write this down because this is good. Understand, when the Lord gives you clarity or causes you not to be confused or perplexed, of concerning how he will prosper the works of your hand. His purpose is that he may signify his pleasure in your heart and cause you to see God and his kingdom. That's the purpose. When it's time for the Lord to establish his covenant with you and to increase you, he gives you understanding or clarity on how he will increase you. The purpose is that you may see God and see his kingdom. So now understand, when God is not making it plain to you what he is doing or how he is doing things, that's because clarity serves a purpose. Understanding serves a purpose. The understanding the purpose of giving you understanding and clarity of how he will prosper the works of your hands in his name is that he may cause you to see him and his kingdom. Now, let me give you a few witnesses because I need you to get this. So now understand, in order to see God, he has to show you what it is clearly that he will do. And the purpose, here's the real purpose of the ministry of the prophet. It is that you can see God because the Lord reveals to his prophet what it is that he will do. And it's purposed that he is showing you what he will do that you may see him and his kingdom. That's the purpose for the Lord making things plain, making them clear, and giving you an understanding of how he will increase you. Let me give you a few witnesses. First place I want to go. Let's go to Exodus uh, 19. Let's go to Exodus 19. Watch now. Exodus 19. Exodus chapter 19. Listen to this. Watch now. Exodus chapter 19. Verse number 5. Listen to what it says. Now, therefore... If you will obey my voice indeed, now listen, and keep my covenant. So now watch now, watch. Obedience, obedience to the commandments that the Lord gives you are purpose that once you are found pleasing through keeping those commandments, he establishes his covenant with you. Here's the purpose. Then shall you be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. So you know how you read in Psalms 24 verse 1 where David says that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. How did he get that understanding that the earth is the Lord's? He gained that understanding through the Lord first showing him how he would increase the works of his hands in his name so that he would establish his covenant with him that he would see God and his kingdom. Here's the great question. Where do you see God? Where do you see him? You see him in the blessing. You see him when he establishes his covenant with you. Oh, let me make sure you get it. Let me show you. And then we're going to go back. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Let's make sure we get it. Watch now. Watch, watch now. Watch this. Watch now. Watch. Where does he manifest himself to you and his kingdom? In the blessing. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Listen. Listen. What color are the words? They're red. Who's doing the talking? The prophet. 
What is he sharing? He is sharing secrets concerning the kingdom of heaven. Listen to what he says. He says in verse number eight, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So where is it that I see God? In the blessing. But before he will ever manifest himself to me, he shows me how it is he will increase me or what it is he will give me to establish his covenant with me. Because remember, God is a spirit. And in order to see him, he must show you plainly in detail how it is he will prosper the works of your hand or what it is he will give you to establish his covenant with you so that you can see God and his kingdom. Understand, how can you believe that the kingdom of heaven exists unless you be given evidence that it exists? The kingdom is what the king has dominion over. And those things that abide in the kingdom are good things. And those good things the Lord gives to those who keep his commandments. So before he gives you good things, he always will show you those things that he will give you to establish his covenant with you that you may see God and his kingdom. Understand, and that clarity and comes through faithfulness, and he gives you clarity as a sign of his pleasure in your heart, and that you may see God and his kingdom. Are you with me? Let me give you another witness. Where, where was I just at? Uh, Exodus 19. I was in Exodus 19 and 5. Okay, watch this. Watch, I didn't even want to go there. Watch this. I want to, let's go to uh, Genesis 17. Genesis 17. That's what I wanted. I'm going to use 19 to 5 later. I, I, got, I got ahead of myself. Exodus 17. Watch this. Watch this. The Lord, because of his pleasure in you, causes you, he, he gives you clarity that he may show you what he will give you or how he will prosper the works of your hand that you may see God and his kingdom. Where is the kingdom of heaven made manifest? It is made manifest through the Lord establishing his covenant with you. You see God and learn what he has dominion over. Watch this. Verse uh, Exodus 17, I mean, uh, Genesis 17. Listen now. Listen to verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk, be walk before me and be thou perfect. Listen to this. Verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you. So therefore understand, the Lord is pleased with Abraham's heart because he's created in him the faith that he needs him to have to use him in the service of the kingdom. But before he can use him in the kingdom, he has to manifest the kingdom to him. So everything that he begins to show Abraham is that he may see God and his kingdom. So listen to what he says in verse 6. I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Listen now, verse 15. And God said unto Abram, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Then kings of people shall be of her. Abraham fell on his face and laughed. And said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is 90 years old, and shall Sarah that 90, 100 years old, and shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? So now the Lord shows Abraham plainly how he's going to give him a son. And the purpose is that through Isaac, he would see God and his kingdom. He would learn through the blessing what the Lord has authority over and see the Lord. Are you following me? Let's keep going. Watch this. Let me give you another witness. Watch. First Kings chapter three. First Kings chapter three. Watch now. This is this is good. 
Watch. 1 Kings chapter 3. Verse 3 says, Solomon loved the Lord. Circle the word loved because it's important. Because here the Lord has knowledge of Abraham, of Solomon's heart towards him. And because his heart pleased the Lord, the Lord clearly reveals to him how he will prosper him. What is the purpose? So that he may see God and his kingdom. So he says in verse number 12, I have done according to your words. I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so there was none like thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all of thy days. So now listen carefully. Why is the Lord defining his increase for him and showing him what he will give him. Because when the Lord increases him, because this will happen by, this will happen by the Lord's spirit and it will be wondrous. And he will see God and his kingdom and understand what the Lord has authority over. Understand what is the purpose for you keeping the Lord's, serving the Lord through keeping his commandments. What is the purpose for you being faithful? It's that the Lord may manifest his kingdom to you. That's the purpose for being faithful, is giving you knowledge that the kingdom of heaven exists. But before he can give you that knowledge, he first has to be pleased with your service. And the, watch this, the sign that he is pleased with your service is when he causes you to clearly understand how he will prosper the works of your hand or increase you or uh, increase you to establish his covenant with you. And the purpose for showing you his covenant is that the reward for your faithfulness is that he manifests himself to you and shows you his kingdom. Are you hearing me? That you, through seeing his kingdom, may be a true witness of the kingdom of heaven. You can't believe in something that you have never seen. So that's why the reward for your faithfulness is the Lord first shows you how he will prosper the works of your hand and shows you the increase that he will give you to establish his covenant with you that at its manifestation, you would see God and his kingdom. Let me give you one more witness. Let me give you one more witness. Psalms 25. I like this one. Psalms 25. Psalms 25. Look at this. Verse number 14. Now, this is who's talking. David, a man after God's own heart. And let me help a lot of people out there. What does, because you hear people all the time talk about, he was a man after God's own What does it mean to be a man after God's own heart? It means that he's a man that according to the Lord's heart, he has perfected David to serve him. So what pleased him about David? was that he created in David a faith that pleased him. And according to his pleasure in the faith that he had created in David, he manifested himself to David that David would see God in his kingdom. But he gave David some very valuable knowledge about how the kingdom of heaven works when it rewards its servants through showing them how he will increase them to establish his covenant with them. I'm going to say this again. Before the Lord will prosper you or increase you, he always shows it to you because you cannot see him lest he show you and understand the clarity and the understanding are a byproduct of his pleasure in you. And it's according to that pleasure that he manifests himself to you. But he cannot manifest himself to you 
unless he shows you how he will prosper the works of your hands or the increase that he will give you to establish his covenant with you that you may see God and his kingdom. Listen to Psalms 25. David says, verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And to fear the Lord is to serve him through keeping his commandments. That's what it means to fear the Lord. To fear him or show him deference or show him respect is to serve him through keeping his commandments. It's no different than when he said to Abram, get thee from thy father's house, from thy kindred, and from thy father's land unto a land that I will show thee and I will bless you. Watch this. Before I will bless you, you have to serve me through keeping my commandment. And always remember this. It's impossible to keep a commandment of the Lord without having to overcome fear because strong faith comes through overcoming fear. But the commandment will always cause you to have to overcome a fear to keep it. Therefore, it's pleasing in the sight of the Lord because you overcame your fear to trust him that he may strengthen your heart in trusting him. Are you getting it? So listen, David says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Listen, listen, he's giving you the reward and he will show them his covenant. So now understand, David makes it plain that the Lord shows those that fear him how he will increase them or how he will prosper the works of their hands to establish his covenant with him. The purpose is that they may see God and his kingdom. Are you understanding? I'm going to say this to you again. It's impossible to see God without him giving you an understanding of how he will prosper the works of your hands in his name or the increase that he will give you to establish his covenant with you. The purpose is that you may see him and his kingdom. So understand this. Make no mistake about this. You can't just declare that you believe in the kingdom of heaven. God gives you evidence according to your faithfulness that heaven exists through rewarding you, keeping his commandments by first showing you how he will increase you or what increase he will give you to establish his covenant with you that you may see God and the kingdom of heaven that the Lord may make you a true witness of the kingdom of heaven. Are you hearing me? So listen to what the Lord says to his servant. He says, understand, this is understanding, not by might. So he wants him to understand how he will prosper the works that he has put in his hands to perform in his name. He's giving him this understanding. He says, it's going to happen by my spirit. I'm going to prosper the work that I have put into your hands to perform in my name by my spirit. And the understanding bears witness that the Lord's heart is to manifest himself to his servant. I'm going to say that again. The understanding of how he will prosper the work that he has put in his servant's hand to perform in his name bears witness that the Lord desires to manifest himself to his servant. And he's clear. I need you to understand that it will happen by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts. So I will command my spirit to prosper the works of your hands. Have this confidence that I am with you to prosper you. Are you listening? Let's keep going. Watch this. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, 
and he shall bring forth. Understand, the Lord's heart towards his servant is to give him an understanding of the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven or of the Lord. Understand the reward, the reward for serving the Lord through keeping his commandments. It's not the increase. It's the knowledge. Are you understanding? But the increase allows the Lord to give you the knowledge about himself. Remember, Genesis 15 declares what the reward for faithful service is. Genesis 15 and 1 says, Abram, fear not, for I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And so the Lord's heart is to give his servant an understanding of his exceeding greatness. Let me make this plain. The purpose for the Lord calling by name your increase or the Lord defining clearly for you how he will increase you, like when he defined clearly for Abraham that he would give him a son by Sarah, or he defined for Solomon that he would give him wisdom. Here's my favorite one, or that he defines for Solomon that when I increase you, all of the days that you will be king, there will be no other king like you. Understand, this, those defining words or giving him an understanding is that he may clearly see the exceeding greatness of God. So Solomon's expectation is that he will abide in the prosperity of the Lord for the entirety of his reign as holy, that there would be no other king like him. But abiding in that space or at that place during his entire reign would give him a knowledge about the exceeding greatness of the Lord and allow him to see his kingdom and see what he has dominion over. I'm teaching real good if you're listening. The Lord says to him, this is what I have dominion over, and I will show it to you based on your heart towards me and my pleasure in you, that all of the days after I increase you, you will abide in this very specific place. This is the type of dominion I have in the earth. Are you understanding how heaven works? This is why heaven speaks to you before it increases you, that as you abide in the increase or as you see heaven increase you, you can clearly see the Lord and his kingdom. Are you getting it? And the Lord here desires to give his servant an understanding of his exceeding greatness. Understand, that's the reward. Write it down. What is the reward? Let's get our mind off of the wealth. Let's get our mind off of the riches. And let's set our hearts on the reward of serving the Lord through keeping his commandments is the knowledge of his exceeding greatness. But to give me this knowledge, to give me this knowledge, let's put wealth in its proper place. Let's put riches in its proper place. Let's put land in its proper place. All of these things allow the Lord to give me this knowledge about himself. Are you understanding? I'm going to give you some witnesses. I want you to understand. What's more important to the Lord than the increase is that you know him. And understand, when you see the increase, you get to know God. Therefore, the servant would never... The servant would never harp on the increase. He would always speak about the exceeding greatness of the Lord because the Lord showed him what he would give him for his service before he gave it to him that the service that the servant would praise the Lord and not the increase. Are you getting it? Why do you think the scripture says in second, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. But first, let me, let me, I'm going to get to that. But let me just show you. Watch now. Watch now. Watch, watch, watch. Watch, 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 watch. I want you to write this down. I'm going back to Exodus. I'm going back to Exodus. I'm going back to Exodus. Watch this. I'm going back to Exodus. Listen to this. Verse 15. 
Now listen to the Lord. Listen to him. Verse 5. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall you be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people. So now understand, in the covenant, does the Lord, is the Lord, does the Lord give you the knowledge of his exceeding greatness that the earth is his? Are you understanding? In his covenant, does the Lord give you knowledge that the earth is his? So when the Lord establishes his covenant with you, watch now, when he establishes his covenant with you, his purpose is to give you knowledge about himself. So the servant would never praise God for the increase. He would always praise him for his exceeding greatness. Are you following me? He would never praise the Lord for the increase. Let me, let me, he would always praise him. Why do you think this Bible says praise the Lord? Because what you are praising is his exceeding greatness that he has manifested on your behalf to increase you, to establish his covenant with you, to give you knowledge of his exceeding greatness and cause you to see his kingdom. So as you abide in the wealth of the Lord, the servant would praise the Lord for his exceeding greatness because the Lord gave him the wealth out of the world. Are you hearing me? Hear me. That's why you praise the Lord. An authentic praise is one created by the Lord. That's why it's pleasing in his sight. Why do you think Jesus said in Matthew 15 that the Lord gave him this understanding of the people's hearts towards him? He said, they praise me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. I cannot accept their praises because I am not the author of their praises. But any praise that I create is acceptable in my sight. So that's why it brings me great pleasure to establish my covenant with you because as I establish my covenant with you, I am creating a praise that is pleasing in my sight. And the praise that you will give me that is pleasing in my sight is you will praise me for my exceeding greatness having made my kingdom manifest to you. Are you getting it? Are you understanding? I, I got another witness. Watch it. I got another witness. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about increase. Let's talk about increase. Watch now. Let's talk about increase because I want to help some people. Let's talk about increase. Listen now. Watch, watch, watch. How do you know? How do you know that all of your heart is to see the Lord when you have no desire for the wealth that the Lord purposes to give you, but your heart is to see him. Therefore, he will give you the wealth that he may make himself manifest because the only way he can manifest himself to you is exceedingly great. And let me teach you something. Surely, surely that wealth will come from somewhere that you've never heard of, that you've never seen, and that you've never thought of. That way, the truth about himself will be made manifest, and that is, he is exceedingly great. Are you understanding? So now let's put wealth, and let's put, let's put wealth, let's put riches in their proper place as heaven sees them. Heaven sees riches, and heaven sees wealth, as a teaching tool. Are you hearing me? There's not one servant. There's not one servant that the Lord has established his covenant with, that he has made wealthy, that he has given riches to, that have praised him for the wealth or for the riches. 
They have always praised him for his exceeding greatness that he has made manifest through giving them the riches and through giving them the wealth, causing them to see the kingdom of heaven and what he had dominion over. They say, truly, there is none else beside the O Lord God, for there is none in the earth that has authority like you. Are you getting it? Watch. Let me give you a witness. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Watch now. Watch. Listen now. Verse 23. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. Watch this. And you shall know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So now listen, what's the reward for waiting on the Lord's timing to increase you? So listen, it is that through increasing you, he gives you a knowledge. Where do I learn? Are you hearing me? Where do I learn that the Lord is Lord of Lords and King of Kings? I learn uh, that he, where am I giving this knowledge? I am giving this knowledge in him, increasing me to establish his covenant with me through commanding great men to bring me my increase. Listen, the scripture is clear. I could give you another witness if you want. And stop, let me, let me help somebody. Watch. Stop thinking that the Lord is so small. Are you hearing me? But I get why you think he's so small. You want to know why you think he's so small? And you want to know why this type of thinking is hard for you to wrap all of your heart around? Is because you have no evidence that this is truly how the kingdom of heaven works. How do you figure that, prophet? Because you have no one witnessing to you about the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven because heaven has not manifested its authority on anyone's behalf to prosper them like this, that heaven would create a witness for itself. When heaven increases you, it creates a witness for itself. You begin to witness about the exceeding greatness of the Lord according to him having established his covenant with you through increasing you. And listen to him. I will command kings and queens to give you your increase. So wait, stop, stop, stop. Wait, wait, watch. God's not thinking about wealth. He's not thinking about riches like you are. He's thinking about wealth. He's thinking about riches as a means to give you knowledge about himself. So when he causes you to receive the wealth, when he causes you to receive the riches, then you will praise him for his exceeding greatness. Understand, if the Lord, if you prosper yourself, then you are robbing yourself of the knowledge of the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven. But if the Lord, if the Lord by his authority increases you to establish his covenant with you, then he is giving you knowledge. Are you hearing me? Where does my speech change? Where does my speech change? Where does my speech change? My speech changes in the covenant of the Lord or the Lord establishing his covenant with me. He causes me to speak with a confidence concerning his authority in the earth. And I label it truly what it is, exceedingly great. I give him what he truly wants from me for establishing his covenant with me, a praise that is pleasing in his sight. And that praise is that concerning his exceeding greatness. Because when you praise the Lord, what you praise is his exceeding greatness. But the only way you can render unto him a praise that is pleasing in his sight is that he is 
the author of your increase. So if you sitting in church and you think what you're giving God is praise, I'm here to tell you that no, that's not one that he will accept because this book makes it clear. There is a time to praise the Lord. And that time is when he increases you to establish his covenant with you. That is the time that he is prepared to be praised. Let me give you another witness. Watch, watch. Joel chapter two, Joel chapter two. Come on, watch now. Watch, 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 watch. Anything won't do. I'm going to say this to you again. Anything won't do. Heaven has a standard as to how it operates. Watch. Somebody say knowledge. Knowledge. Watch. Joel chapter 2. I'm going to read 23 through 27. Listen to what, what it says. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. Circle this. In the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years of the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, my great army, which I sent amongst you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Listen to this. And praise the name of the Lord, your God, that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So watch God. So God says, listen, because you waited on me, I desire to give you knowledge. Because causing you not to be ashamed is is purpose for those that have waited on the Lord's timing to increase them. So here's the reward for those that serve him through keeping his commandments and wait on him to increase him. So look what he does. Let's make it plain. Look what he does. He makes it very plain how he's going to increase them to establish his covenant with him. He gives them a set time, the first month, and then he in very fine detail, details to them what they should expect to see in the first month. They should expect to see wondrous acts because the reign of heaven are the spirits or the angels of God coming down to prosper you. So they should expect to see wondrous acts. In that month, they should expect the places that they store their provision to be full and overflow. They should expect him to increase them to a place where they have more than enough. And according to that increase, they will praise him according to his exceeding greatness for causing them to increase in this month. And then he gives them knowledge that there is none else in the earth that has authority like him. So what would they be praising him for? They will be praising him for his exceeding greatness. And because he has detailed it to them, look, look where the detail and the clarity comes when the Lord is set to increase you because they will see his kingdom and praise him for his exceeding greatness. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Now listen to the word of the Lord to his servant. And the Lord says to his servant, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth. So the Lord says to his servant, I understand how I will cause you to finish the works that I have put in your hands to perform in my name. The Lord says that I will send my spirit. I will send my spirit or command my spirit to go to a great man in the earth because a mountain is a, is a great structure. And it's a structure in the earth, but this is great. So it's a great man in the earth, not a great man in the city, not a great man in the state, not a great man in the country, but a great man in the earth. 
Listen, he says, this is how I'm going to cause you to know my exceeding greatness. This is how I'm going to prosper the works of your hand, the works that I put in your hand to perform in my name. This is how I'm going to cause you to finish them. I'm going to send my spirit to a great man in the earth. And on your behalf, the Lord's going to command his spirit to call his servant's name to this great man. This great man will know his name. And the Lord will command this great man to make a way for his servant to finish the works that he has put in his hand to perform in his name. Are you hearing me? This is how he's going to reveal to him his exceeding greatness. He will command his spirit to a great man in the earth and on behalf of his servant and call his name to this man. Cause this great man to know his servant's name and command him to make a way for him to finish the works that the Lord has put in his hands to perform in his name. Understand, watch, and through and through the Lord, go, through this action, the Lord will make his name great. Now understand, and the greatness of his name, listen to this, I got two thoughts in my head. The greatness of his name will be that the Lord is with him to prosper him. But the purpose for the Lord making his name great is to give him knowledge that it pleases the Lord to prosper his servant. Get this, because this is good. It's in the Lord increasing you that he gives you knowledge of his pleasures. I'm going to say this to you one more time. Where does the Lord change my speech concerning him? In him establishing his covenant with me. The Lord through making his servant's name great. Because by going to this great man, he will, through this action, make his name great. And because, listen to this, this is good. Because his servant has served him through keeping his commandments and has been faithful, the Lord will redeem the time and move him into this great place quickly. But understand, the purpose for the Lord making his name great is to give him knowledge that it pleases the Lord to prosper his servant. He would testify and be a true witness that it pleases the Lord to prosper his servants. Hear this and understand this. It is in the Lord increasing us to establish his covenant with us that he reveal or gives us knowledge of his pleasures. Are you hearing me? We already sound differently talking about God because we're talking about the pleasures of the Lord. Why do you think David, just listen, why do you think David testifies that at his right hand, right? And his right hand tended to establishment. So it's in establishing his covenant with his servant at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So David, through the Lord, establishing his covenant with him, was given knowledge about the Lord's pleasures because that same servant testifies that, watch this, that the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So now listen, where does the Lord change my speech? He changes my speech and changes the way I speak about him in him increasing me to establish his covenant with me. Are you understanding? In God, when he gives his, establishes his covenant, he reveals or he gives you knowledge of his pleasures. Let me give you a few witnesses. Watch this. First place I want to go is let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. 
Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Watch this. I want you to listen now. Watch. And can I say something to you? I want you to get... Are you listening to how the servant of the Lord would speak about the increase of the Lord or the covenant of the Lord? He's not, have, he's not telling you about God making you rich. He would be telling you about the Lord giving you knowledge about himself and his kingdom. Are you hearing me? Just stop and think. You're sitting in church and they talking to you about being rich. So all you're pursuing is being rich. All you're pursuing is being wealthy. But the conversation that I am hearing from the Lord is that in the covenant of the Lord abides great knowledge about God and his kingdom. And that a servant whom the Lord truly has increased to establish his covenant with him would be given a knowledge about God in his kingdom that changes his speech and causes him to speak peculiarly about the kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about the increase. He's talking about the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven. Watch. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Watch this. Verse number nine, and the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. So listen to Moses. Moses is teaching the people. He says, here's where you sit your confidence. He said, be confident about this truth. Be confident about this truth, that it pleases the Lord to give you good things or to give you the kingdom. For it is in the Lord, are you hearing me? For it is in the Lord establishing his covenant with you that he reveals his pleasure to you. So where do I learn what does it please the Lord to give me? I learn it. In the covenant. Watch. Let me give you another witness. Watch. It's all over the scripture. I got one that's really good. Watch this. I'm going to help somebody tonight. First Kings. First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3. Listen now. You go home and you 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 think about it. You think about it. Listen to this. First Kings chapter 3. Look at this. Verse number. Verse number 9 and 10. Listen to what it says. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad, who is able to judge this thy so great a people. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. So listen to what the Lord says is teaching here. He's teaching us that it pleased him to give Solomon the wisdom that he gave him. Why did it please him? Because in giving him this wisdom, it would cause Solomon to see the exceeding greatness of the Lord and to see his kingdom. So when you would talk to him about his wisdom, he would talk to you about the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven. For there is none else that could give such wisdom unto men but God. And this wisdom that the Lord has given me bears witness to his exceeding greatness. Are you hearing me? He would then cause people to set their hearts, not on the wisdom, but set their hearts on the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven or set their hearts on the kingdom of heaven because he would speak about the increase according to the exceeding greatness of the God that gave it to him. He ain't in here talking to you about being, about having wisdom that nobody else has. He's speaking to you that this wisdom was given to me based on my faithfulness that I may know the exceeding greatness of God and see his kingdom. This wisdom bears witness that there is no kingdom like his kingdom. That's why the Lord gives you good things. That's why he gave Joseph the understanding to interpret dreams that people could see that there was no God like his God. That's why he gave Moses 
the authority to execute the judgment of heaven in the earth. That Pharaoh and all of the Egyptians could see that there was no God like Moses' is God. That's why he gave Daniel the understanding to interpret visions and dreams that Nebuchadnezzar and all of his kingdom and everyone around him would understand and see that there is no God like Daniel's God. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? That's why the Lord, when he rewards your service, gives you good things that he may give you knowledge of his exceeding greatness and cause you to see his kingdom. If he gives you something that a man can give you, then he has just made his kingdom equal to the kingdoms in the world. But always, somebody say always, always he will give you good things so that you can see his exceeding greatness and his kingdom. Let me give you one more witness. I'm, I, want, I want you to see this. And I need you to listen to me. I need you to listen. Come on now, watch now. I need you to listen. Watch. I need you to listen. Because I want you to understand something. Watch. The Lord's pleasure is made manifest in prospering his servant. Let me say this to you. You can't know the pleasure of the Lord if he, you can't know this truth about him if he doesn't increase you. Watch, I just want you to listen. Just want you to listen. First Kings chapter 10. Just listen. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600, verse 14, 603 score and six talents of gold. Besides that he had of the merchantmen, of the traffic of the spice merchants of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors of the country. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target. He made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds of gold went to one shield. Listen, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side on the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the stays, and twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other six steps there was not the like made in any kingdom. Listen, and all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. Listen, for Sol so King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Listen to this, verse 27. And the king made silver in Jerusalem to be as stones, and cedars made he to be as a sycamore trees than the veil for abundance. Why did I read that? Because the Lord put it here in scripture, and he shows you how wealthy Solomon was. But watch, it pleased him to make Solomon this wealthy. Listen to what he said. He says, Solomon exceeded all of the kings of the earth for riches. He made silver to be a stones and the best wood was treated like the worst wood. Are you hearing me? He had a throne that was made of pure gold. He made shields for target practice. He made targets for, uh, for target practice out of gold and all of his shields were of gold. What is the Lord teaching us? He created this life for Solomon because of Solomon's faithfulness to give Solomon a knowledge about his God, that it pleased him to prosper him like this. I'm going to let you think about that for a minute. I'm going to let you think about it. Stop and think. You go read it. The Lord increased Solomon like this to give him a knowledge that it pleased him to increase him like this. So when Solomon would talk to you about his increase, he would sound peculiar because he would say, this is the Lord's pleasure to prosper me like this. This is the Lord giving me, according to my faithfulness, knowledge of his exceeding greatness. And this wealth 
that you are laying your eyes on is a manifestation of the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven. For there is no other king that has the authority to increase a servant in whom he is well pleased like this. I'm going to let you think about it. I'm going to let you look at it. This increase was full of knowledge. While you're reading it and you're being covetous, let me help you. This increase is full of knowledge. It allowed Solomon to truly know that it pleased the Lord to prosper him like this. And Solomon would turn around and watch because the increase was not by the hand of anyone that he led. You want me to say that again? Because the increase was not the hand was not by the hand of anyone that he led. It was not by the hand of anyone in the earth. Because every king that gave into Solomon's bosom, it was at the commandment of the Lord. Are you hearing me? So because his increase was not by the hand of anyone that he led, he would be teaching them to put all of their confidence in the ways of the kingdom of heaven. And surely heaven would manifest its authority on your behalf to prosper you exceedingly greater than this, that the Lord may give unto you. Because watch now, he cannot increase anybody that he leads like this. He has to keep his word and increase them and, and on a level that exceeds this to give them knowledge of his, to cause them to see God and to give them knowledge of the exceeding greatness of his kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? I want you just to go back over it and think about it. Are you hearing me? If I need you to make me wealthy or to make me rich, I'm not going to have you put all of your confidence in the, in the ways of the kingdom of heaven because I'm going to teach you the way that allows me to prosper off of you. But if truly, truly all of my confidence is in heaven, then the increase that I abide in will be by the hand of heaven. And then I will confidently teach you to put all of your confidence in the ways of the kingdom of heaven and not the ways of the world because the increase that you see me abiding in is by the hand of the kingdom of heaven. Are you getting it? Are you understanding? I hope you get it. Go back over and look at it because listen now, look now, watch, it's good, it's good because the Lord, the Lord's heart is to increase his servant that he may give him knowledge to increase the works of his hands, the works that he has put in his hand to perform in his name and to give him knowledge that it pleases the Lord to prosper his servant. But to do that, he's going to command his spirit on his behalf by calling his name to a great man that the Lord may prosper the works of his hands in his name to give him knowledge of his kingdom and his pleasures that it pleases him to prosper him in this manner. Are you listening? Let's keep going. Watch now. Listen to this. The headstone thereof with shoutings crying grace, grace unto it. Now, what I want to make sure you're paying attention to is the Lord's, look at this, go back over the six, circle the word Lord. The Lord's heart is to give to his servant knowledge of his exceeding greatness and to manifest his kingdom to him. And let's, let's get some understanding. And the reason, watch now, why is the Lord showing him what, how he's going to prosper the works of his hand because the Lord wants him to see him. Are you hearing me? Because the Lord needs him to see him. The purpose for the Lord causing him to see him increase him is that the Lord may give to him the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is what do you joy in? 
you joy in the Lord being your God. The purpose for the Lord needing you to see him increase you to establish his covenant with you is that you, through you seeing him increase you, he gives you the joy of him being your God. Are you understanding what we joy in is in him through seeing him prosper us to establish his covenant with us. We joy in him being our God. He gives to you through you seeing him increase you the joy of him being your God. That's the purpose. The Lord, that's the purpose for him needing you. Somebody say need. Need. That's the purpose for him needing you. Why you wait, 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 stop. Why do you think he is giving him an understanding of how he will increase him? Because the Lord does not want him to miss seeing him increase him. Because through him seeing the Lord increase him, the Lord will give him the joy of him being his God. That's what the joy of the Lord is. We joy in him being our God through seeing him increase us. So therefore, he creates this joy that no one else can create. Listen, if you prosper yourself, it's impossible for you to have this joy. <laughs> but if the Lord, you know, I'm laughing because if we grew up in church, you know how the old deacon would come into church and be singing, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. It's true, but he just didn't understand. Watch, if you prosper yourself, it's impossible for you to have this joy. But when the Lord causes you to see him increase you, why does he manifest himself to you through increasing you? That he may give you the joy of being your God. When the Lord increases you, causes you to see him increase you, he gives you this joy of being your God. That's what we joy in. Let me give you a few witnesses. Let me give you a few witnesses. First place I want to go, let's go to Ezekiel 34. Watch this. Let's go to Ezekiel 34. Watch this. Let's go to Ezekiel 34. Uh, Ezekiel 34. What, do I, what verse do I want? Mm, which one? Which one? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want Isaiah 35. I'm sorry. Isaiah 35. Let's go to Isaiah 35. Then I'm going to go back to Ezekiel 37. Isaiah 35. Listen now. Listen. Verse number 10. Listen. Listen. In the ransom, verse 10, in the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs. Listen to this. In everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. Everlasting tendeth to the covenant. So where does the joy of the Lord abide? Or where does the Lord give you the joy of the Lord? Well, he gives you the joy of the Lord through establishing his covenant with you because you see him establish himself as your God and through seeing him establish himself as your God, he gives you this joy of him being your God. Are you understanding? Let, let me give you another witness. I want you to get it because how many of you all of your life you've been wondering well, what is the joy of the Lord? What is the joy of the Lord? The joy of the Lord, because understand, our God is Lord. So when he establishes his covenant with us, he establishes it according to his lordship that he may establish himself as our God. That's where you see Lord God. The Lord, your God, is God. So therefore, he exercises his authority to establish himself as your God. So you see him working on your behalf to prosper you, to give you the joy of being your God. Are you getting it? Let me give you another witness. Let me give you another witness. Watch this. Watch this. Let me give you another witness. Watch this. Where I'm going to go, uh, let's go to Ezekiel 37. What? Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. Watch that. Watch this, watch this, listen to this, listen to this. Verse, uh, what I want? 
Verse 31, listen to this. I mean, not 31, excuse me. Verse 26, listen to what it says. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place my sanctuary in the... Did I want that? No, I don't want that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. I don't know where I went there. Isaiah 61. That's, that's later on down the line. Isaiah 61. Here it is. This is what I want. Isaiah 61. Verse 8. Listen to what it says. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. Here it is. And I will, I, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Verse 7. For for your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. So where does the Lord give me joy? He gives me joy when he establishes his covenant with me. Because I see him prospering me. That's why it requires that God shows you how he is going to prosper you. Because the purpose for showing you how he's going to prosper you, that's why he says, Sarah's going to have your son at this set time. Because I need you to know that when you see that son, you know that it's me and you can joy in me as your God. Because when you see me prospering you to establish my covenant with you, I am giving you the joy of the Lord. I'm causing you to joy in me as your God. Let me give you another witness. Let's go to Ezra. Ezra chapter 6. Ezra chapter 6. Ezra chapter 6. Ezra chapter 6. Go to Ezra chapter 6. This is good. I like this one in Ezra. Ezra chapter 6. Watch this. Listen to this. Verse number 22. Listen to what it says. And, keep the and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy. Listen. With joy. For the Lord had made them joyful or full of joy and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. So the Lord caused them to joy in him as their God through causing them to see him increase them or prosper the works of their hands to establish his covenant with them. So now understand, that's why the Lord has a prophet when it is time for the Lord to establish his covenant with you, the reason that a prophet would come to you and he would begin to declare to you the increase of the Lord according to his covenant. And you can always rest assured that he will declare that the Lord is going to give you land. And then after that land, he will declare to you that in that very land, he's going to add unto you all of your provision, he's going to add unto you. If you're a man, he's going to add, well, he's going to add unto your wife. And then he's going to declare to you that he would give you a child. But he would always have a prophet declare to you the increase of your covenant clearly. He would define it and call it by name purposefully so that when you see the Lord increase you according to the words that he gave you according to his covenant that he, as you see him increase you, is giving you the joy to joy in him as your God. That's why it's important that the Lord shows you how he's going to establish his covenant with you so that when he does it, he gives you the joy of joying in him as your God. Somebody say amen. Come on. And the Lord's heart is to give to his servant joy through, watch this, through, through, wait a minute. The purpose here, the Lord purpose is here to give his servant the joy of the Lord, according to the favor that he has found with him by causing his spirit to speak on his behalf 
to prosper the work that he has put in his hands to perform in his name. This is that he may know the joy of the Lord, in joy in the Lord as his God. This is the time that the Lord will take from him the sorrow in the morning and replace it with joy. Because the joy that the Lord replaces sorrow and mourning with is you joying in him being your God. Somebody say amen. Let's keep going. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Now listen to the scripture. The Lord makes it, look at verse number eight. The Lord makes it very clear that his time has come to cause the people to receive his servant. Listen to the scripture. The Lord makes it very clear that his time has come to cause the people to receive his servant. The Lord's heart is to give the people a leader to cause them to receive their leader. And he will cause them to receive his servant through prospering the works of his hand wondrously. Understand, the Lord causes people to receive you as his servant. You don't cause them to receive you as his servant. The Lord causes the people to receive you as his servant through prospering the works of your hands wondrously because wonders in the hand of a servant are a sign to the people to receive them as a servant of the Lord and the words that leave their mouth in the name of the Lord as truth. That's the purpose for wondrous acts in the kingdom. It is a sign to receive the individual in whose hands you see the wondrous acts of the Lord being performed to receive that person as a servant of the Lord. That's the standard in the kingdom. That's the purpose for wonders. The wonders are a sign to receive the person as a servant of the Lord. That's how the Lord causes people to receive you. You don't cause them to receive you. You can't tell them you're a servant of the Lord. You can't come with a certificate. You can't come with a degree. No man can anoint you as a servant of the Lord. They can anoint you as a servant of the people, but only the Lord can cause people to receive you as his servant. And the way that he causes you to receive his servants or to receive his leaders is according to the wondrous acts that he performs in their life as a sign to you to receive my servant. Let me give a few witnesses. Let me give a few witnesses. I want you to get this. Watch now. I want you to get this. Watch now. Because the church has totally abandoned signs and wonders and leans to the ways of the world to receive leaders. But the kingdom of heaven's way is to put wondrous acts in the hands of its servant or to perform wondrous acts in the hands of his servants as a sign to the people to receive them as a servant of the Lord and the words that leave their mouth in the name of the Lord as truth. I want you to go through your scriptures. What did you think the purpose of signs and wonders was for? What did you think it was to impress you? to cause you to be in awe, to wow you? No, it's so that you with confidence can receive that person as a servant of the Lord. Anything else is a lie. Anything else is deceit. So if someone comes in the name of the Lord and the Lord does not prosper the works of their hands in his name wondrously, then they are not a servant of the Lord. Because the wondrous prosperity of a servant is a sign to you to receive them as a servant of the Lord. Let me give you a few witnesses. Watch this. Genesis. Not Genesis. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Watch now. Watch Exodus chapter 4. Listen. 
Listen, listen to the conversation and then gain some understanding. And here's going to be the question. Here's going to be the question. Because I want you to hear me when I say this to you. So the guy got a degree hanging in this office from a school. So that does not make him a servant of the Lord. Just because somebody anointed them as a bishop or because somebody anointed them as a prophet or because someone anointed them as an evangelist or because someone anointed them as a pastor, that does not make them a servant of the Lord. Just because somebody tells you that the Lord called them, that does not mean they're a servant of the Lord. The only thing that surely establishes that it is a servant sent from God is that the Lord prospers the works in their hands in his name wondrously. That's the purpose of wondrous acts as a sign. You know what? I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to Exodus chapter 4. I'm going to run over to John chapter 4. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. Then I'm going to go back. Are you really? Watch this. Watch this. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Watch this. And then, you know what? I'm going to go backwards. Then I'm going to go to John chapter 3. Listen to John chapter 4. Watch this. Listen to this. First, I'm going to read 47. But when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Now, listen to the understanding that Jesus gives. Jesus says unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Well, what is it that the signs and wonders cause you to believe? It causes you to believe that the person that uh, is the operating, that heaven is wondrously prospering the works of their hands is a servant of the Lord. The Lord needed the people to receive Jesus' words, but they would never receive his words if they did not believe that he was sent from God. And the way that heaven causes you to receive its servant is that it performs wondrous acts in his name, that the servant performs wondrous acts in the name of the Lord to cause you to receive them as a servant of the Lord. Remember, the wondrous acts were to cause the people to receive him as the servant of the Lord, that they would receive his words that he spoke in the name of the Lord as truth. Because what did he come to do? He came to change their thinking because the scripture says this. Watch now. Listen to what the scripture says. The scripture says this. Listen to what the scripture says. The scripture says, watch this. The scripture says that the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. So therefore, he came to change the way that they thought about the kingdom of heaven. But he could not change their thinking if they were not sure that heaven sent him. So to cause them to have a confidence that heaven sent him, the works that he did in the name of the Lord, the Lord prospered them wondrously to cause the people to receive him as a servant of the Lord. Are you understanding? Watch, let me give you another word. I said I was going to go back. Watch now. Watch. Listen to the scripture. You've been in church all your life, most of you. And so you've read the scripture, you just didn't listen. Watch this. Listen to this. John chapter 3. Watch this. Should I say that for later? Should I say that for the end? I'm going to save that for the end. I'm going to go back to Exodus chapter 4. Watch now. Watch. Watch. I want you to listen. I'm going to go back to Exodus chapter 4. Then I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to go to a few places. Watch this. Exodus chapter 4. Listen to this. Verse number 1. And Moses answered and said, but behold, wait, 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 wait. I can't, I can't do this. That would be wrong, wouldn't it? I got to throw in. I got to throw this in. I got to throw this in. Exodus chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Listen to what it says. The Lord says to Moses, come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. 
All right? He said, I'm sending you. Listen to what Moses said. And Moses said, verse number Exodus 4 and 1. And Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me. They won't believe me. They won't believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. He said, they ain't going to believe that you sent me, and they not going to receive my words. You want me to say it again? Moses says, wait, 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 and understand, this is not just here to be here. It's purposeful. It is teaching you the ways of the kingdom of heaven because it's in the law. That makes it foundational. That means this is the foundation of everything that we believe in. And if God does it here, you will see him doing it over and over and over and over again because this is foundationally how he operates. And if it's foundational, it's generational. And if it's generational, it's eternal. Even in the world to come after this world just passed away, he will still be operating in this manner. So listen to him. Moses says, they won't believe me or neither will they hearken unto my voice. So now watch what the Lord does. The Lord says unto him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. He said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said to Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. Listen to the Lord. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared unto thee. Now, and the Lord said, furthermore, I mean, put your hand into your bosom. Put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, it became white. His, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thy hand in thy bosom again. And he put it into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as it is other flesh. Listen to the Lord. And it shall come to pass. If they will not believe thee, if they will not believe thee, if they will not believe thee, Hearken, nor hearken to the voice of the first sign. They will believe the voice of the latter sign. So listen to the Lord. He's teaching Moses. He said, Moses, this is how I cause people to receive my servants. He says, I prosper the works of their hands in my name wondrously. Um, you want me to say that again? He said, Moses, this is how I cause people to receive my servants. I prosper the works of their hands in my name wondrously. Let me help you understand something. Wait a minute. Wondrous acts have always been reserved to cause the people to receive the servants of the Lord. Are you understanding? It has not changed. That's the way of God. He used it with Moses. He did it with Samuel. He did it with David. He did it with Elijah. He did it with Elisha. Are you understanding? Let me give you a few more witnesses. Then I'm going to move on. Let me give you another one. Watch, 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 watch. Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. Watch now. Watch. I'm going to go to verse number 7, and then I'm going to go back up, because I want you to listen to the Lord. I, I, I hope somebody is understanding. Let me help you understand something. So all of that emotion that you feeling in church got nothing to do with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God establishes its presence through wondrous acts. You don't feel God. You see God. So if you in there and somebody tell you, I feel God in here, they're lying. If they say, I sense God in here, they're lying. The wondrous acts are to give you a confidence in a surety that the spirit of the Lord abides in the place that you are. Listen to the Lord. Watch. The Lord said, verse number seven, and the Lord said unto Joshua, listen, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. So listen to God talking to, to Joshua. He says, I need the people to receive you. I need them to know that I, just as I was with Moses, I'm with you. I need them to receive you as my servant. That's what I need. Are you hearing me? That's what I need. It's not what you need. It's what I need. I need them at this time to receive you as my servant. So that they can give you the same respect that they gave Moses. But the only way I can get them to receive you is watch this. Verse 5 says, And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So the Lord says, I'm going to magnify you. Or I'm going to cause them, cause them to see clearly that I'm with you, that they may receive you as my servant. So the wondrous acts 
that I'm going to perform in your, the wondrous acts that I give you to perform in my name are to cause the people to receive you as my servant. Are you understanding how heaven works? I know that's difficult, but let me help you understand something. It surely gives you protection from being deceived. And many of you, if you really listening and you really getting this, let me make sure you understand something. While you in church and they begging you to sow a seed into good ground, or they begging you every time they on TV to sow seed into a good ground, let me make sure you understand something. The Lord does not need you to give money to his servants because that way they would be beholden to you. He always increases his servant to give them liberty from being subject to men in any way. So therefore, what he does for your sake is he performs wondrous acts in his name by the hand of his servant to cause you to receive them. The only thing he wants from you is for you to receive his servant because the rest of the provision and all of that stuff he has taken care of. Because if he uses you to give to his servant, then his servant is subject to you through what you have given him. But if he increases him exceedingly, his purpose is to deliver him from being subject to man in any way through borrowing or serving him. So therefore, that ain't in the equation. So then he gives you wondrous acts by the hand of his servant in his name to assure you that he is his servant so that you can receive him. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? I'm going to give you one last witness. I, gotta, I, could, I, could, I could go on. I could go to, write it down. Go to Isaiah 42 and 1, and you'll see the Lord says, Behold, my servant in whom I delight, whom I uphold, I have put my spirit upon him. Look at it. Come on. He gives him his spirit so you can receive him. Watch. I got one last witness. Watch this. Watch this. You know this one. But I, I want you to just think about everything that the Lord has said. I know, you know this, watch this. John chapter 3, verse number 2. Listen to what it says. The same, I, I got to throw one in there. Watch this, because this is good. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God. Rabbi, we know. Rabbi, we know. How do you know, Nicodemus? For no man can do the miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Nicodemus literally just said to Jesus, he said, listen, we know that you sent from God because he put those miracles in your hand to cause us to know that you're from God and to receive you. Are you listening to him? The miracles were to cause him, cause them to receive him as a servant of the Lord. Oh, most of you are probably having a real issue with that. Well, let me help you with this. Watch this. Watch this. John chapter 1, it's verse 12 says, watch this, verse 11. It says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Well, wait a minute. How was they supposed to receive him? They were supposed to receive him as the servant of the Lord, according to the miracles that the Lord put in his hand to do in his name. Those miracles bear witness that he was sent from the Lord. And therefore, according to those miracles, they were supposed to receive him as a servant of the Lord. Are you understanding? That scripture in John chapter 3, verse 2, it's not just there to be there. It's teaching you that this is how you receive the servant of the Lord. Nicodemus knew. He said, we know, we have knowledge that God has sent you. And the knowledge we have is in the miracles that you are doing in the name of the Lord. Those miraculous acts bear witness that God sent you, and I'm receiving you as the servant of the Lord. That's why he came to Jesus, because he knew he was a servant sent from God, and that's how he identified him before he got into any other conversation with him. And then Jesus immediately moves in to teaching him about the kingdom of heaven because he received him as the servant of the Lord. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Are you getting it? The Lord makes it very clear. 
that the time has come to cause the people to receive his servant. And the way he's going to cause them to receive his servant is by prospering the works of his hand in his name wondrously. This is how the Lord will cause the people to receive his servant. It is a sign. Listen to the scripture. It is a sign that the Lord of hosts has sent him unto you. So those wondrous acts that he performs in the name of the Lord are a sign to you to receive his servant. I want to make sure you understand what God is teaching because this is truly how heaven causes you to receive his service. It's not my responsibility to get you to receive me. Why do you think Jesus told the apostles, when you enter into a house, he put the miracles in their hands. He put those wonders in his hands. He said, if that house will not receive you, well, what were they supposed to receive them according to? The wondrous acts that Jesus had put in their hand. He said, if they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet and go to the next house. But the Lord... It's clear here that his time has come to cause the people to receive his servant. And the wondrous acts that his servant will perform in his name are so that you can receive him and the words that leave his mouth in the name of the Lord as truth. Those wondrous acts give you the confidence to receive him and his words as truth. Let's move on. I'm done right here. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet and the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. I need you to listen to the Lord. The Lord says, he's speaking clearly. The Lord says to his servant, what you have need of now is peace from your enemies that I may cause the works of your hands to prosper in my name quickly. Listen to the Lord. What you have need of now is peace from your enemies, that I may cause the works of your hands to prosper in my name quickly. And the way that I will give you that peace is through causing your enemies to see our relationship through me prospering the works of your hands wondrously. You want me to say it one more time? Look at the scripture. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. They shall see, they shall see the plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. The Lord makes it clear to his servant. What you have need of, what you have need of, is peace from your enemies. And he's going to cause him to obtain that peace through causing his enemies to see his relationship with the Lord. Understand, the peace of the Lord is the Lord through causing, through your enemies, seeing your relationship with him, make peace with you. The Lord causes your enemies through seeing your relationship with him to make peace with you. That's how the Lord gives you peace. He, through your enemies, seeing or hearing about your relationship with the Lord, he causes them to make peace with you. That's how the Lord, through his covenant, gives you peace. Because the place where your enemy sees your relationship with the Lord is as he establishes his covenant with you. And it's through them seeing it that the Lord, or hearing about it, that the Lord causes them to make peace with you. Hear me, you don't conquer your enemy. You don't defeat your enemy. The peace of the Lord is the Lord causes your enemy to see your or hear about your relationship with him. He causes him to see it or hear it. And then they make peace with you. He causes them according to what they see or what they hear to make peace with you. 
that he may cause the works of your hands in his name to prosper quickly. This is the time, write it down, that the Lord causes things to move quickly. Let me give you a few witnesses and we done. Watch now. Now I want to go to uh, Ezekiel 34. Watch, because I want you to get this. Listen, Ezekiel 34, verse 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. So now where does the peace of the Lord happen? When he establishes his covenant with you. How? Because that's the place that he manifests his relationship with you. And when he manifests it, the purpose is to cause your enemies to come and make peace with you. Let me give you another witness. Watch. Now let me go. Let me go to Proverbs 16. Let me go to Proverbs 16. I'm going to go to Proverbs 16. Then I'm going to go to Joshua chapter 5. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. Listen to verse number 7. When a man's ways please the Lord. When a man, okay, who's doing the talking? Solomon. He's someone that God gave a wisdom that has never been duplicated. And so here's the understanding about God that he got, that he's proclaiming. He says, watch this. When a man's ways please the Lord. So what pleases the Lord? Faith. Are you hearing me? What pleases him is faithfulness. So here is what he does for the faithful. But where does he reward your faithfulness? In establishing his covenant with you. Watch, listen to Solomon. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with them. So wait a minute. Watch. Once again, you get to see God and the exceeding greatness of his kingdom. He, through your enemies, hearing about your relationship relationship with God or seeing your relationship with God make peace with you. And the Lord gives you peace to cause increase to happen quickly in your life. Watch. Let me give you another. Let me show you. Let me show you this. I got two places I could go. I'm going to go to Joshua chapter 5. Listen to this. Verse number 1. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them any more because the children of it because of the children of Israel. When they heard about the Israelites' relationship with God, their hearts changed towards Israel. And when Israel came their way, they would make peace with them according to hearing about their relationship with God, according to the wondrous thing that he had done in their life. Are you understanding how heaven works? Heaven doesn't work like we do. So understand, the Lord says that hear him, that he makes your enemies make peace with you as a sign of his pleasure in you and to give you peace. So the scripture bears witness. When they heard about these people's relationship with God, what they heard caused their hearts to melt. And in that, they would make peace with the children of Israel. Are you understanding what I'm teaching? Let me give you one more. I got, I got, I got a couple of more I can show you. I just know where it is all over the place. Second Samuel chapter eight. Second Samuel chapter eight. I'm about to be done. Second Samuel chapter eight. Listen to this. Watch this. Watch now. I'm going to show you how smart God is. Let me show you how smart God is. So God got David going around defeating people, right? But watch what he does. Watch this. Verse number nine, second Samuel chapter eight. When Toy king of Hamoth heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadiazir, then Toy sent Joram his son unto King David to salute him and to bless him because he had fought against Hadiazir and smitten him. For Hadiazir had wars with Toy, and Joram brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass. He came to make peace with David. Because 
he heard about this victory that the Lord had given David. And the Lord knew that this victory would cause this king to see David's relationship with the Lord. And according to seeing his relationship with the Lord, because the victory that the Lord gave David was wondrous. And when the king heard about the victory that the Lord had given David, his heart melted within him. And immediately he said, I got to make peace with this guy because his God is exceedingly great. And if he could give him that victory, I've been fighting with this king for years and I couldn't defeat him. If his God can give him this victory, then surely his God can give him victory over me. Therefore, I need to go and make peace with him that he will not defeat me. And therefore, the Lord, through causing this king to hear about David's relationship with God, caused him to make peace with him. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? I'm done right here. Listen, and the Lord is very specific about the enemies that his servant needs peace from. Listen to this. And the enemies that he needs peace from are these. The enemies that see the work that he is, the Lord has put in his hand to perform in his name. They disrespect it based on its size and because it has not prospered. These are the enemies that the Lord declares he needs peace from. Those that see the work that the Lord has put in his hand to perform in his name and they disrespect it or look down on it because of its size and because it has not prospered. But the Lord declares that he will cause those people that look at the work that he has given his servant or put in his hand to perform in his name and look down on it and disrespect him because of its size and because it has not prospered, he will cause them to see his relationship with his servant. And according to seeing his relationship with his servant, those same people will come and make peace with his servant so that the works of his hand can prosper quickly. The Lord declares it's time for things to move quickly. And he's going to give his servant peace from the enemies of the work that he has put in his hand through causing them to see that he see that he is with him through prospering the works of his hand in his name wondrously that they may see his relationship with God and that they may see the everlasting kingdom and make peace with his servant. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Go back over it. Listen to it. But truly, heaven's ways are not our ways. And God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And now he's going to give you a manifestation of his kingdom that you may set your heart not on the ways of the world, but on the exceeding greatness of the kingdom of heaven. God, we thank you for your word. We bless you for all that you've said tonight. God, allow those that hear to search your scriptures, to truly come into the understanding of your ways, knowing that surely your ways are not our ways. And exceedingly great is your kingdom. For you have dominion over things that are impossible for men to have authority over. So allow them, God, to see you. Allow them, God, to know you. Allow them, God, to turn to you. We bless you right now. In the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. Amen. Have a good night.